Aid workers on the front lines of conflicts around the world are being killed in unprecedented numbers. That's according to the United Nations as it marks World Humanitarian Day. The UN stating that Israeli strikes are now relentless. That assessment comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made a trip to Israel for a new round of ceasefire negotiations, saying it may be the best and last opportunity to end the war. With 280 aid workers killed in 33 countries last year, 2023 marked the deadliest year on record for the global humanitarian community. They continued their efforts to overcome all obstacles to supporting people in need in the face of severe funding shortages. On World Humanitarian Day, we once again salute their courage, their determination, and their service to humanity. More than half of the 2023 deaths were recorded from October to December in Gaza, the UN saying it was a result of airstrikes. Since October, more than 280 aid workers, the majority of them staff members of the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, have been killed in Gaza alone. The fear 2024 may be on track for an even deadlier outcome. International humanitarian law, the law that protects civilians during wartime, is being ignored and trampled. A climate of impunity means perpetrators do not fear justice. This is a failure of humanity, responsibility and leadership. On World Humanitarian Day, we demand an end to attacks on humanitarians and on all civilians. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel, saying the government has accepted a proposal to bridge differences, holding up a ceasefire and hostage release in Gaza, and he called on Hamas to do the same. The next important step is for Hamas to say yes, and then in the coming days for all of the expert negotiators to get together to work on uh, clear understandings on impl implementing the agreement. It's not clear whether the latest draft has addressed concerns cited by the militant group or if it addresses Israel's demands for control over two strategic corridors inside Gaza. Blinken spoke to reporters after holding a two and a half hour meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In a very constructive meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today, uh, he confirmed to me that Israel accepts the bridging proposal. Uh, that he supports it. It's now incumbent on Hamas to do the same. Now Blinken is off to Egypt and Qatar in hopes that this deal will move forward. <laughs> He has faced added pressure from the families of hostages who have pleaded with the United States to push the Israeli government for a deal. Anthony Blinken, please push Netanyahu for a deal at any price because I want my son to be free. I want my son back home. Unfortunately for us, the Israeli government is not doing its best. It's dragging its feet. It's torpedoing its own initiative because of political gains. Blinken has warned that the latest push for a Gaza ceasefire and hostage release deal was probably the best and possibly last opportunity urging Israel and Hamas towards the elusive agreement. But the push for a deal comes as shelling continued today in Gaza. Five were killed after an Israeli airstrike hit an internet distribution facility in Khan Yunus. in Israel, the first terrorist bomb went off in Tel Aviv in nearly two decades. It exploded within hours of the U.S. Secretary of State's arrival. The current war began on October 7th last year when Hamas gunmen stormed across the border into Israeli communities, killing around 1,200 people and abducting about 250 hostages. Roughly 110 remain in Gaza tonight. <laughs> Israel's military campaign has resulted in mass casualties, including the deaths of at least 40,000 people, many of them women and children. It has also leveled much of Gaza, driving nearly all of its 2.3 million people from their homes.